everybody. It's Jeff Dunham along with my buddies, Matt McNeil and Jeff Rothpan. And here we are for episode number, what is it, Matt? 98? Oh, you put me on the spot. I think we're number eight now. Eight. All right. I'm going to go with 98. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Number yeah. number ninety eight. Jeff, Why what not? is it? What is the deal with the thing on your head? Oh, uh, you know, to be honest, I forgot. I was outside with the dog, uh, you know, just picking up after, and it's pretty bright out. And I just put him up and totally forgot. So well, I, I don't know if it's a. Uh, <laughs> I guess I well, can take them off. If if you lose your glasses later, they're on your yeah. head. Right. Yeah, but I walked around, but they've been on there for like twenty minutes. I didn't realize I didn't take them off again. So why isn't there an emoji with the sunglasses on their head? There's the cool guy with the sunglasses on, but there's no emoji of, of it just on his yeah. his head. It looked like you. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but I, <laughs> yeah. I, I picked them that way uh, when I come in and out of the house and stuff like that. And you know, I was usually I'll know where they are. I did forget to take them off, but. It's funny, I, I like I have a hard time getting my glasses to stay on my head. Is it yeah. my head it's, shape? Is that, you're a cone, yeah, you're a cone you head. You're, you're a pointy head. <laughs> you have more hair, I guess. I don't know. No, you would think that yours would just like slip right off. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, these are tighter. And these are the sunglasses where that, that actually can come with some reading at the bottom. Oh. Like, you can buy them at Costco. Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> How how did we get off on this tangent? Oh, sorry, what are we talking about? You know, I was I, I was watching. Um, I think it was Morton Downey Jr. on Joe Rogan, and uh, I think it was just a clip. So they joined it in the middle of the conversation. Not Morton Downey Jr. What did I say? Morton, what, no, what, Robert, Downey Robert Downey. Jr. <laughs> There's a blast in the past. Wow. <laughs> it was right. I wondered Rob. If, in the comments, some, if anybody remembers Morton Downey Jr., please oh, write the comments. Go. That's it. I've completely lost it. I'm I'm wow. I'm gone. All right. So Robert Downey. More how did oh, I come yeah, there up you with, go. how did oh, I yeah. come up with that? Morton wow. Downey Jr. I actually saw Morton Downey Jr. live. He did a tour really? back in the eighties. Oh my yes. gosh. All right, yeah. let me let me start over. You can't stop. Okay, rewind. There we go. So I was watching Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Joe Rogan, and uh, Robert Downey Jr. They were talking about eyesight, and he was talking about his number sevens and number fours. W were they talking about glasses that you buy at the at the store for magnification? Is that what they were talking? Like, like you go to the drugstore. Oh, wow. Or, or, oh, or yeah, they have that, that little stand where you, you don't you you don't need like graduated lenses, Jeff. Or no, to read? Do you have like vision stuff? No, but what I'm saying is, did Robert Downey Jr. does he go to uh, whatever you know Walgreens oh. and oh, and, and, get and, the... and buy the crappy glasses? The cla oh yeah, I, I mean I do because I lose them. What but I have a, one good pair. Okay, but he's a multi, multi, probably almost a That's billionaire. Why, why can't he just get a prescription and buy 30 of them and have each place that he sits in the house right. instead of the crappy That's... ones that make your eyes worse? <laughs> yeah, you would think point. Iron Man would have a better plan for vision. Yeah. yeah. That's another and, thing. Yeah, that, some uh, of those store ones are ugly. Well, that's another thing. Uh, David Koresh. Uh, there's a transition. David Koresh. <laughs> Warren Downey Jr., David Koresh. Yeah. Wow. David. We, this is a rogues gallery here. I don't feel so bad that I left you on my head for 20 minutes. <laughs> but Waco, what, were the, what was the name of the group, David Koresh's group? The, uh, oh, the Branch Davidians. The Branch Davidians. Oh, wow. Yeah, my buddy yeah. Gary Bratwell used to do a great bit about um, how David Koresh w claimed that he was God's son. Remember that? Or something to that oh, effect? Yeah. And he had on these giant Coke bottle glasses, these really thick glasses. And Gary was like, you know, if you're God's son, don't you think Pop would have fixed your peepers? <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> That's great. So, um, oh, I don't man. know. Yeah, Morton Downey too Jr. Soon, what, what conversation has those two names within a, <laughs> two minutes of each other? <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't know if anybody's had a discussion about Morton Downey Jr. since 92. Maybe. Right, right. Wow. How <laughs> oh, we bring all that together? I, I have no idea. All right, I'll, I'll add another name. I'll, I'll add another name to make it weirder. I was doing a uh, press interview this morning uh, for a casino I'm doing up in, um, in Washington State uh, in July. And um, the guy, you know, they had me on. You're on hold listening to the commercials while you're waiting for your spot to come up. Uh, it was a TV interview, and uh, the guy, he said uh, uh, something to the effect of, you yeah, have the sunshine today, you know, sunshine on your shoulders. And I went, 
you you actually did a John Denver reference. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, that maybe, maybe a fifth of your audience got. <laughs> maybe a fifth. I mean, that's, yeah. that is, that's, yeah. like, that's way out there. At least my yeah, Morton Downey Jr. was a mistake. <laughs> right. right right yeah you met that other downy I, I did i and they're not related oh, right morton and robert downy no no i'm pretty juniors. sure juniors yeah okay it doesn't fix all right I no wait, wonder wait. if they were related but anyway yeah well we're here for another reason we have a interview uh my, my podcast coming up my interview with joe coy and gentlemen as we talked about a little earlier this is going to be my first interview that I will have done having not had having not done it before talking to you guys. So uh, I have no idea how this interview went. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I mean, I assume it went well, but we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. He he could be a complete a hole, but I don't think so. I, I, I no, you know, it's it's funny. I've I've seen him uh, qu quite a bit, you know, uh, in, in advance of this or whatever, and he just sort of seems like. A really like down to earth guy because you know everything for him seems to be about family and mm -hmm. you know it just sort of seems like all of his comedy comes from a really good place. Yeah, um, and he's yeah. another guy like I, Russell Peters that he's this international star that people all over the country, uh, all over the world, all over the country and all over the world love him, and he has these uh, great audiences and plays too, and you can see it in the videos, uh, the Netflix specials and all that, and mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's another amazing story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's and he's amazing. I did see him uh, the first time I noticed him was I was at a comedy festival and the show was not going well before he was on stage. But as soon as he hit the stage, there were other comedians before him that just weren't doing that well. And the audience seemed kind of bored and not into the show. And he this guy is somebody to watch. He's, he's amazing to watch on stage. Just so much passion, energy and really funny. So. Yeah. And he's another he one, another one like Fluffy and uh, all, all these guys that we've been talking to that is very likable on stage. Uh, you, you'd you yeah. want to sit down and have a drink with the guy and chat with him. So that's what I'll be doing yeah, in just it, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It seems cool. to me also that like because his um, comedy is so sort of like life centric to him, like his specific life, but he's makes it he makes it so universal that. Um, I think that even though he's talking about very specific um, nationalities and things like that, but it, it just it somehow transcends that and becomes like a universal thing. And I think that's one of the, the reasons that he's so popular. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's universal subjects. And uh, that's the way I was able to make my world tour work is that we just, you know, and Jeff and I, when, when we were working on it, we just chose subjects that everybody could relate to the family and yep. job and putting food on the table and the economy and, yep. you know, uh, spouses yep. so those subjects For all everybody. work yeah and he's always talking about joe coy's always talking about his mother and uh even though she like you said matt very specific about that particular woman and some of her idiosyncrasies and things that make her funny it's still mom so yeah. so many people can yep. relate to that cool yep all right and plus well, you want to see a, plus if you don't know him you want to see a guy with the name Joe Coy, you, like you just have to be curious, <laughs> Jeff. Because you haven't done the interview yet, you got to ask him about his his name. There, he's got a bit about it, which is I, I'm assuming yeah. a true story as well. That is really because Joe Coy is not his name, right? 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 Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah I, I read, and I'm always I'm always a little a little hesitant to ask celebrities about their real names because they oh. change their names for a reason. But he does, he, he writes, I think he writes about it in his book and it, he does have a bit yeah. about it. He talks in other press about how he got that name. So it's not a big secret. But I am a little nervous every once in a while when somebody has another name, it's like, you know, do you want to bring that up? And also, <laughs> right, I, right. I was wondering this the other day, at what point in your career do you say, you know, my name is, uh, you know, whatever it is, Biff Cunningham. And I don't, it's not a thing. <laughs> I need to yeah. change it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> to Armstrong. Right. <laughs> Biff Armstrong. Yeah. We, or yeah. Armstrong Cunningham. Which one? <laughs> right. Armstrong I, I, you know, Steel. Almost, I'm Armstrong yeah. Steel now. I don't want to be Jeff Dunham. I'm Armstrong <laughs> Steel. Did you ever think about changing your name? It was too late. That's what I'm saying. At what <laughs> point, Mike? You know what I mean? I'm doing Cub Scout banquets in the fourth grade, and I'm like, well, I'm known now. 
I can't change my name now. I'm famous in yeah, my elementary early. school. You're, fa- you're yeah. famous with Pac-402. Pac-580. Pac-585. Pac Pac yeah, I can't change my name now because all the kids know who I am. But seriously, I mean, what is it? Is it the agent? Is it the manager or the the, the artist themselves who goes, I am I this this I can't get famous with this name. I gotta change <laughs> right, it. Right, right. Well, you yeah. gotta then you gotta ask Joe Coy about this because uh, yeah. he's got at a least really he talks about it. Funny, I think. Yeah, and, and he's very candid about it. It's really, really a, a, a good story. So now what's going to happen is when I talk to him, I'll be, instead of talking to you guys about the interview, I'll be talking to Joe Coy about the introduction that we are just now doing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. you know, where do you see that introduction? We talked about Morton Downey Jr. and yeah. David Koresh. <laughs> and John Denver. And you're in, the, you're in all of it. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's move on here, and we'll we'll talk to everybody afterwards. And I I don't know who's uh, who I don't know who we're gonna see uh, with character wise uh, when we come back because we always show a clip and do something. I think it oh. might be might be Walter uh, Matt because I loved my idea of of what we should show after this. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. Thanks, uh, All right. guys, and we'll see you after the interview. Here we go. Sounds good. All right. My guest today is a stand-up comic who sells out huge venues all over the planet. So many accolades, I didn't know which ones to pick. This one I love. In 2017, Joe Coy broke a record for the most tickets sold by a single artist at 23,000 tickets. 23,000 tickets and 11 sold-out shows at the Neil S. Blaisdell Blaisdell? Blaisdell Concert Hall in Honolulu. He's had four specials on Comedy Central and Netflix. He has his weekly podcast, The Coy Pond. He has appeared on over a 140 episodes of Chelsea Lately as a season regular roundtable guest. And his first book, Mixed Plate Chronicles of an All American Combo, has just come out. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to my right, Mr. Joe Coy. Joe, how are you? Yes. How are you, Jeff? I'm great. So before we start here, um, I, I must say that I apologize that I, I canceled on you the, the first time we were going to do this interview because I had just gotten my shot, my vaccination yeah. for COVID. And I got the Johnson & Johnson one. And by the way, that was a great headline to wake up to the other day when it's like, oh, yeah, everybody's oh. having strokes. That's great. I so, saw that. Yeah. But uh, but I, I I had the next day and I didn't feel terrible, but I didn't feel on top of my game. And I wanted this interview to to go great so i canceled on you and i apologize for that no don't apologize a lot of people were going through that on that that particular shot it's heavy i heard well it, I, I don't know i, I just it, it wasn't bad i just it was just I, I i wanted to feel right i didn't want to be thinking about how i felt instead of thinking about you but then mm-hmm. we scheduled it right there in that phone call joy to to, to joe to have the to have the 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 uh, this thing happened a few days later and then you went and the message i got from somebody who worked for me was uh joe uh, canceled on you i'm like wh- 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 what what and that's all i got there was no why no reason it's just we're gonna try and reschedule and i'm like what did i do wrong what what how how did i piss him off i thought we had a nice conversation i thought he was oh this is so sad can, when, can i explain can i explain why yeah go ahead i was going to tell but you tell this is awesome Okay, so um, I, I'm shooting this movie in Vancouver, uh, Canada right now, and I'm missing my son's birthday. His right. birthday is April 21st. Right. I was scheduled to leave for Vancouver April 11th. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I was just like, I have to do something for my son yeah. for his birthday. So I, literally, when I got off the phone with you, I, I came up with this idea that I would just rent a tour bus because we both love aliens. And I wanted to do like this. Wait, wait a minute. You and your son both love aliens? We love aliens. We love the whole thing of oh. like trying to find an alien. That's and, uh, great. Okay, we, we have another thing in common. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So I want to do this whole tour of like the Grand Canyon and Sedona and go see, you know, sit in the vortex and like go to Roswell and see if we can catch an alien live. Uh, we went to the uh, White Sands and, you know, all these like, like mysterious, like, uh, uh, landmarks, you know, like the, these really cool areas to go visit. And I, I literally, in, in one day, his mommy, my ex-wife, she she came up with this whole idea and knocking this this little mini tour out with my son and and all of his cousins. And it was the best time ever, man. Okay, so it was it was it, it was cousins, not just friends. No, no, no. It was all his, all my son's cousins. Okay, because we, we, my wife and I were talking about this, and after this was expl- after you explained it to me, because I texted you and like, man, what happened? 
<laughs> you explained, we got on the phone, you explained it to me. And, and it was like, then I was talking to Audrey, my wife, and I'm like, you said, I thought you said friends, a bunch of friends, your son and a bunch of his friends. And I'm like, hang oh. on a second. How well do they know Joe Coy that they're just going to let their son jump on a tour bus with this dude <laughs> and travel across the country? And I, what? How does this work? I don't know if I do this as a parent, but OK, so it's cousins. So they know you pretty well. Yeah. You know, what's crazy, Jeff, is uh, I take all these cousins because they're all right around the same age. Right. Right. And I took all of them. Uh, you know, I take them everywhere. I take them to Hawaii. I take I take them on like big elaborate uh, uh, vacations, and then this one is their favorite one, hands down. This one they can't stop talking about. Well, I have to and, admit, I watched a couple of the videos, and it looked great. It looked really fun. But I got to tell you, so you went to the Grand Canyon and you flew a drone over the Grand Canyon. I think I'm not wrong here. That's really yeah. illegal. Yeah, that was very illegal. <laughs> I, I, I swear, Jeff, I, I, I only shot, I, I only flew a little bit out and I came right back. Oh yeah. Only a little, only up. a little bit. I broke the a law just bit, a little just bit. A little. <laughs> so I got to tell you a story. So in 2000 and I think it was 13 when drones were becoming big, uh, yes. I, I had flown radio controlled helicopters for years. So once you've flown a radio controlled helicopter, a drone is easy because a drone will stay level and it won't crash, right? You can crash it yeah. into things, but if you just let go of the controls, it'll just sit there. So to me, yeah. flying them was a piece of cake. So we were in, I, I, I put this whole package together. We're going on the world tour and I flew this thing around uh, all kinds, all over uh, the world getting all kinds of shots from my special. It was a Comedy Central special. But the best one was in South Africa. We we're on in a hotel that was, you know, I think we were on like the 50th floor or some crazy place and a little window. And I said, I think, in a pretty big suite, I said, I think I can take this off in the suite and fly it out the window. <laughs> Did you do it? Yeah, I did it. And then the crazy part was it had that, it was a new feature where it would, you know, it could return itself if it lost signal. So I just yeah. pushed both sticks forward and said, fly, mother ever. And it just flew wow. out. Yeah, it just disappeared off into the sunset <laughs> with, with the camera going. And then a few minutes later, the camera comes back on and it's flying back to me. <laughs> <laughs> towards a tiny window in the side of this giant uh, hotel with people below dining. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. And I, I, you know, and it, it wasn't, everything wasn't automatic. I had to fly the thing through that tiny window and we landed it on the floor. I got the whole thing, but yeah, no one was oh killed. My God. So I want to know just how many drones and GoPros are inside whales bodies right now. Oh, the, and that, yeah, isn't, because isn't, yeah. My, my son's GoPro, yeah. two of my son's GoPros in the ocean right away. The minute uh. he bought it, in the ocean. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's inside of a whale. And then my, my camera guy, we were in Australia. He was like, oh, I got this great shot idea. We had to go buy this, this drone. And we're sitting on, the, uh, on this boat. And we're all waving to it as it <laughs> takes off into the ocean. And then it just, it just nosedives into the ocean. You can actually see it's like. No, <laughs> it's the funniest it, thing. It's the best footage in the world. Oh well, you got it back? No, because oh, oh, you know it's on the hard drive. It's on the hard drive, so you see oh, it like oh, waving. Oh, so it was playing. I was, it got it. Yeah. All right. So you yeah, were recording. You so were recording funny. it remotely, not just on the GoPro. I got it. Wow, yeah. that's 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 pretty darn funny. You, you know, mm -hmm. speaking of aliens, they're going to come back and find all that stuff and think, what, what are these idiots? Oh, sure. What are these idiots doing? These narcissistic people <laughs> taping themselves over, over and over again, oh, wow. and, and saving it on hard drive. Uh, Who are these people? My my favorite one was when they started getting going, and there's one. It's probably still on YouTube where a guy just took one, turned on the camera, and just hit go and made it fly straight up as high. That's completely illegal now too, as high as yeah, it would yeah. possibly go until it just i think ran out of batteries and then it tumbled to earth and the whole thing and he somehow found it again this was before you could broadcast it back to the you know back to your transmitter and uh, found yeah. the gopro it was up through the clouds it was almost into freaking outer space i guess it ran out of oxygen and couldn't fly any higher i don't know what happened but that's crazy yeah. well let's get let's get to you here so uh like i said so many accolades here uh and uh, i appreciate you uh me canceling you and then you canceling me and but now we're, we're making up for it so it's <laughs> so it's great but joe you're doing I shows swear. you're doing shows all over the world and uh, your your book now, I'm going to show a, a still of it. Here it is right here. 
It's uh, Joe Coy, Mixed Plate Chronicles of an All-American Combo. And uh, I know you've explained this a million times uh, as as to what the title is, but uh, as you say, uh, uh, well, you can explain it to you, but you're half white, you're half Filipino, so go ahead and yeah. explain the title there. I, You know, Mixed Plate, you know, I'm a big fan of Hawaii, obviously. And, um, you know, when you go to Hawaii, they have this this dish that they serve called Mixed Plate. It's very popular. And it's basically just a dish of food with all different types of uh, ethnicities being represented on the plate. You know, you got a piece of uh, Japanese food on there. Uh, they, they, you know, they got like teppanyaki on there. That, that's Japanese. They got Korean barbecue. Then they got a scoop of macaroni salad. Uh, that doesn't get any whiter than that. You know, they got a scoop of rice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. They throw spam on there. Like, you know, it's just this big plate of food and it's all these mixed items and you know individually they're all delicious you know but you put it on the plate all together and it's even it's even better and and i know that's kind of a weird uh uh what is that analogy is that what that's called but 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 that's how i feel about that's how i feel about me like all of us together on the same plate is it's, it's beautiful if we're all just together and you've kind of had this theme in your act uh, from the beginning right because uh, yeah. being a mixed race an american uh, mixed race uh you you yeah. had to grow up with uh, all kinds of racism and so many yeah. stories in the book and things that you tell on stage uh and i bought yes. the book by the way and i got the i got the i'm going back to the still here i got the ipad copy of it right there and, uh, yeah, that's why I love this still because it's uh, it's the it's uh, you know it shows them both. So oh, by the way, I'm also I'm impressed with how many. This doesn't even show the entire list. You're di- the big deal. People don't know this when you get a book is the distribution because it's not going to sell if you don't get it distributed. However, you did this yeah. is fantastic. I mean, there's Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, Bam, the bookshop, Philippines, the Philippines fully yeah. booked. What is that? Yeah, yeah. Can you believe that they it's it made it its way out to the Philippines uh, on this. Uh, it literally the bookstores are going inside bookstores in the Philippines. So that's that's a beautiful thing, especially during this time, Jeff. Like things are not leaving the states right now. Well, and uh, it, yeah, and that's where I want to go a little bit right now. Is uh, so your act, and I I don't want to explain it, try and explain it better than you. But what I got from watching your stand up and is what you talk about is. Um, uh, w- when you watch your show, you talk about your mom, you talk about your your family and your son, and I, I think you said yourself that you thought you had this very odd uh, family and a weird mother, and it was only you. And then you realize, no, this is this is a universal subject. It's just mom. It's just she's a yeah. different facade and has a few things that are slightly different than other people. But we all, every race on this planet, everybody has uh, family stories. And yeah, and this is what your comedy is, right? It's why it's so relatable. Am I accurate? That's one hundred percent. And and you know, I always wanted to be able to tell my story without, you know, just singling out Filipinos. Okay, only Filipinos are going to get this. I wanted to be able to tell my mom's story by like becoming my mom on stage, and then having people relate to to my mom just being a mom. And and. And, and, you know, if you tell the honest stories, then people relate more. And and I've noticed that it's like, if I just tell something that happened when I was a kid, I get more DMs or, or more people walking up to me going, you know, my mom did the same thing to me. And, and that's what I love the most, man. It has nothing to do with race, Jeff. And that's why, and that's why you don't worry it, about going to other countries because you know that they're they're gonna get it. And that was my yep. thing. That was the first time we did a world tour. It, it's giving me goosebumps right now because I can remember being so frightened about what am I gonna talk to the people in Singapore about? What am I gonna talk to the people in South Africa or or, or yeah. the Middle East? Well, how are they gonna relate to me at all? And yeah. then I realized, no, all my stories are about, you know, my, my comedy. It's about Walter and his, and his wife. Uh, it, it's about divorce. It's about uh, uh, yep. raising kids. And this is, everybody can relate to this stuff. And that's why. exactly Yeah. And that's why I think your your act is one of those that's, that's universal and it draws people in. And I, I think you feel good after, you, after you've watched you because it, it is a, it's a unifying experience. Is, do you get that from yeah. people as well? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I love the most. I love it when, you know, one thing people always assume is like, oh, uh, damn, how many Filipinos are in Nashville? (laughs) It's like, oh, you sold out Nashville? How many Filipinos? Well, actually there are none, to be honest, there's none. It's just me. Like that has nothing to do with how many people are going to come to my show. 
uh, you know, I'm selling out because people are coming to to see me, and it doesn't have to be a a a, a particular ethnicity, and, and that's what I love the most. It's just funny is funny, right, Jeff? Like if you're funny, people yeah. get it, and and they're coming. Sure, and and uh, w- absolutely, yeah, and that's why. And, and again, I don't want to go on this tangent, but that's why I used to uh, hate it when people would pick on Carrot Top or whatever prop comics. Like, ah, eh, it's not real oh, comedy. I'm like, wait a minute, they're, they're laughing. Yeah. They're selling out theaters and and large venues, and people are loving it. How is this not? How is this not okay? It's it's great. People yeah. love the, the, that's, the comedy. That's, that's called that's called jealousy. That's yeah, what that's called. Yeah, you're that's probably all right. That is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're trying to find an excuse on why they're not selling out big venues, and and that's that's the struggle they're dealing with. If you sit there and say that Carrot Top's not funny, he's hysterical. Oh my gosh! I see he's... Carrot Top. I see Carrot. I see Carrot Top go up for twenty minutes without a prop. And crush. Right. So and I, I really don't understand what they're talking his about. His show in so. Vegas is unbelievable. We went and saw it when I was there in uh, in 2015. I did a residency there for 10 months. And oh my gosh, it was unbelievably great. But let me ask you. Yeah. So what, what do you think, uh, if you had a signature bit, uh, what is it? If you had to define, that this is my comedy, this is my favorite thing, this is what I do. Is there one? Yeah, there's several. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and the, you know, I think uh, Ting Ting was one of my biggest ones about my son and uh, the mysterious green Sharpie when he colored his body parts with it. And uh, he called it his, he called it his ting ting. That, that went, that, I mean, to this day, my son's 18 now and, right. and people walk up to him and go, oh, is that ting ting? Oh like, hey, no. Man. Hey man, he's 18 now. Okay. That's great. He did that when he was like two. Okay. So, uh, how, how about uh, yeah, the how so about that, the different cool. different Asian accents? That's got to be up there, right? Oh, uh, I love that one because I love the way I did the joke, Jeff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's one where you could just do the accents and hey, there's here's a funny joke, but it wasn't about that. I was really trying to find a way to compliment, you know what I mean, who I was talking about. Right. You know, give them an identity, something to be proud of. You know what I mean? In no way was I making fun of them. Right. And and one educating. You know what I mean? Like. It felt like, you know, I'm teaching you something that you guys really need to learn. And and that's what I felt with those jokes. Well, I, uh, I loved with, with in whatever, I, I can't remember which special it was, but I loved, and you do, we do this in the editing, but um, they would, whenever you did a joke about whichever ethnicity at the punchline, they would then cut to the crowd shot of that whatever group that was, it was Japanese or, or whoever it was a Korean or whatever, yeah. they would cut to people who they, I guess the director figured must be of that race and guess yeah. who was laughing the hardest they were yeah they were. Yeah, <laughs> exactly and then if you read like the dms or the comments yo it's like so much support like you know what i mean like vietnamese people going dead on bro thank you so much so <laughs> that's great and sometimes I mean? like yeah and it, sometimes the jokes are they're they're it's all good nature but sometimes they're not exactly complimentary but it's okay because yeah. it's true yeah and you got to find that you got to find the right way to say it and deliver it without being offensive and i felt i did that on that on that joke i felt like i did it the right way yeah just learn how to slap a person in a nice way (laughs) 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 so um okay but you've been doing this for a a long time and the world is changing in what i think is a terrible way and with, yeah. with the woke culture and people getting canceled, the fun is going away. And yeah. for somebody like me, of course, uh, the the white guy, it's it's really not fun because I can't, you know, it's it's tough for my core audience. I've talked about this before. Uh, I talked about that. Yeah. This with Russell Peters with my core audience. I I can keep doing what I've always done, but. Uh, yeah. and, and it's not, and it, to me, it's not that bad. I don't make fun of people, but I really have to, you know, and I, to this day right now, I can't think of anything that I couldn't do, uh, right now that I did a year or two ago, a few years yeah. ago. Yeah. It's like, oh man, that, yeah, I've, 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 I've grown a little bit. I've learned a little bit. I wouldn't do that again. Um, mm-hmm. but it, so it's tough. So are you having to backtrack at all or do you refuse to or what's your what's your take on all that have you changed anything i haven't changed anything jeff Mm -hmm. like i I, and i don't want to you know i i want to you know i I need to be a little bit more creative i guess now because you know there is a sensitive uh there is a sensitive culture out there right now that we got to be aware of because uh they're quick to use their twitter fingers 
You know what I mean? Right. And, and, uh, and then and what's, what's really irksome is the people that are the most critical are the ones that have seen only snippets and clips. And it's completely yeah. taken out of context. They have no idea what your show is. They have no idea who you are as a person because they yep. haven't invested the time to watch. Yep. They see yep. one clip and one person says one thing and then it's pile on. Yeah. And that's the most annoying. It's like, dude, do your research first, man. Right. Learn about somebody before you quickly uh, banish them <laughs> from yeah. existence. It, and that's what we have now. We got people that are just out there willing to just ruin careers without even learning anything about that person. Sure. It's Getting like, to know them. Yeah. It's like it's, a it's, it's a shame, man. Yeah. It's a shame. So, um, let me talk about the, the book again a, a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, is it, I noticed that you'd started it a while back a few years ago and then finished it up during the pandemic. So is yeah. what you ended up with, what you started what your goal was when you started did it end up being the same thing or did you, did you change it along the way no i i, I had a, a game plan i guess and there were stories that i really really wanted to tell and uh and i did it and uh and i'm very proud of it um you know like talking about my brother you know something that you know i've neglected to do for so long you know just in regular everyday life i never told anybody i had a brother right and uh and, and this was that opportunity to let the world know just why I felt the way I did and how embarrassed I am for being the way I was. And, and, and hopefully with me telling my story, people will relate to it and, 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 you know, learn from it as well. Well, the book is, is, is like a movie because it's up and down. You laugh, you cry. Uh, it makes you think. Uh, so it has all the, the elements there of a perfect movie. And let's go into that right now. So you're, 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 you're in Toronto. Where are you in Canada? No, I'm in Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver, the other side. So you're in Vancouver, yeah. and you're getting ready to, to start filming next month, correct? Yeah, man. So, third, and this is no is. this is no chump change uh, little movie. So uh, Steven Spielberg, and what what is his part in all this? <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah, it's that's that's Steven... nuts. That talk about aliens. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I know exactly that, right? It, it, so, yeah. exactly, I didn't even really think of that, man. I was like, yeah, me and my son were talking about that when we were doing our little alien adventure. We were like, can you believe we signed with the king of aliens? Yeah, Steven exactly. Spielberg? Like, <laughs> you so, should buy so a crazy you should stuff. buy a tiny bicycle and have him autograph it and just put yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Amblin, yeah anyway so uh, so 100 so is he the what what is his title going to be executive producer what, what he's is executive he? producer he's paying right. for the whole thing man he's he's amazing and you know what's crazy jeff is he he literally has his hands involved in everything so what the script and and again so casting. tell everybody tell everybody what the movie is what is it it's called Easter Sunday. Um, I, you know, it's based on my family on one day. It's one chaotic day and uh, of everything. Me, my family, the comedy, the chaos, the culture, everything happens in one day on Easter Sunday. And that's what we're going to portray. So this was a, a legit thing that actually did happen on Easter Sunday? Yeah, this is, no, this is going to be my interpretation of how my Easter Sundays look. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> So that's that's how what what's gonna go on here. And um, it, it's crazy how it all happened. Jeff is, you know, Stephen was watching Coming in Hot, the special I shot in Hawaii. Right. And uh, he brought me in for a, a, you know, a meeting and asked about a movie idea. I pitched him Easter Sunday, and here we are, like nine months later, getting ready to shoot it. It's it, it it's only been nine months. I think so. I think it was like 10 months since the script. Yeah. That's crazy. Cause these things usually take yeah. years, years. I know it's, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. And I'm not complaining. <laughs> that, that is fantastic. That's amazing. And how much, uh, uh, who has final say on the script? I mean, you, you have obviously have a lot of input there, right? Yeah. We, you know, I had a, you know, we have a writer, Ken, uh, Chang, he, he helped write it. And, um, but it's based all on my story. It's it's all on you know my ideas, my jokes, and everything. Oh, that's that's really nice. It's all going to be on location there. Yeah, all all shot here in, in Vancouver, but it takes place in Daly City. So, well, we're going to go to San Francisco and get some shots there. So, how many how many times have you actually visited the the Philippines? 
Um, it, it would be about four to five times. Right. Um, and, and the last time is when I shot my special there, my Netflix special there. So are you, and a, I, are I you a huge, you're, you're obviously a huge hero there, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and it is one of those, I mean, you're, you're giant. Is that yeah. right? Right. You can't walk yeah, You, you can can't walk anywhere. That. No, but that's great. That, you know what? I, my whole, <laughs> my whole thing was, you know, Jeff, it's hard to explain being a half white, half Filipino kid in America and wanting to make it in this business and trying to find some type of identity, something that can inspire you. You know what I mean? Like watch TV or go to the movies and, and there was never anything that represented my culture or gave me that that push. And and now that I had that opportunity to to open that door, that's what I wanted to do, you know? And and that's why I shot that special in the Philippines. I wanted people that lived in America that were Filipino to know that you have a chance and an opportunity. And I wanted to provide that same opportunity for people that lived in the Philippines as well. Put them on the map and show the world that, hey, People in the Philippines speak English and they're loving people and they're entertainers and they're singers and they're dancers. And, you know, just give us a little representation, a little bit of identity. And, you know, and, I, and I'm glad I was able to do that. And, and in doing so, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, people love me for that. <laughs> and um, uh, um, you're, um, um, what's the bop, the Funko Pop. So your Funko Pop, how, how yeah. many of those ended up going down to the, to the Philippines? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't, I didn't strike a deal with the Philippines on that one. Aww. I kept it. I kept, I kept it here. I didn't want to, I didn't want to send it to the Philippines. I don't know why. Is <laughs> oh, that well. weird? Uh, yeah. yeah Is that weird? You know, you'd kill it there. Oh, you, oh, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? I know. It's weird. I know. <laughs> I just wanted to keep it here locally. I don't, oh. I don't know what it was. I guess make it exclusive or something. So I just kept it in the States. I, I forgot to Jeff Dunham numbers. Yeah. I'll yeah. Whatever, whatever. So I forgot to ask you, uh, the distribution of the film, where does it, where's it going to be? Is it going to be theatrical? Is it going to be Netflix? But where, what, how, where it's going to be worldwide and it's going to be theatrical release only. Oh my gosh. That, you, you yeah. don't get any better than that. That's crazy. I know it's crazy to even show you the deal. It's, it's nuts, man. The deal was, <laughs> you know, Steven, you know, Steven has this thing with Netflix. So, you know, you, you know about that. He's, no. he's just got this thing against Netflix and, you know, he is all about the theater. He's, he loves theaters and his movies go inside theaters. And that's what he said to me. You know, that's what it says in the contract. This is going to be a theatrical release only. I, I, so. I, I, it's literally you, you, you've walked into Oz. It's just nuts. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it's not a guy behind the curtain. It's actually Oz. <laughs> yeah. He's the coolest dude, man. I, you know, it, I, I got a letter from him too, and, and uh, uh, an email from him, and it's just like the, I can't wait to frame this this uh, this email because it was just the way he wrote it was just so amazing. It was like this email was a movie, like the way he wrote it was just genius. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty amazing. I, I pinch myself all the time. That's great. So I, yeah, I don't have many emails that I that I'm proud of or that, I, that amazed me. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the one though. <laughs> Uh, when I was getting ready to get my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, they yes. allow you to invite two celebrities uh, to be there with you. And I thought, well, I'm going to shoot for the moon. And I wrote a letter to Steve Martin. And I said, uh, Steve, um, uh, they're allowing uh, two guests uh, on the star ceremony, at the star ceremony. And I thought I would love to have my comedic idol uh, ever since childhood, since junior high, uh, be there with me. And I thought what an honor it would be. But since Johnny Carson is dead, would you mind coming? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> And um, I thought, oh, man, do I got a chance at this? And he just wrote it, you know. So the email that I've kept is him saying, no, I'm busy, but thanks anyway. <laughs> is that what he said? No, it was much nicer than that. But that's basically oh. the, the email he wrote back. But it was still kind of cool. I, I had to try. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> well, you tried the wrong way. <laughs> I thought he'd get a kick out of that. But anyway. Dude, that's so funny. Yeah, but it ended up being two great guys. It ended up being a Jay Leno and Howie Mandel. So, you know, uh, what the who, heck. Who'd you have there? Who was it? Uh, Jay Leno and Howie Mandel. 
So oh, that's so nice. Yeah, so it was it was great. Anyway, um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, you know, you, you you talk about spoiling your son, and I, I'm just curious because you grew up poor and without a lot. So, are you still spoiling him? And is it is it is it an issue at this point with him being 17? No, he's he's just got a really good head on his shoulders. Like he knows, he knows he has like uh, deep pockets, <laughs> but uh, he doesn't act like it, and he and he's actually very good about it, and uh, I love it. It's, it's cool. I, I think his mommy and I did a good job. Yeah, well, so, you know, uh, you're, you're renting a tour bus and taking him and the cousins to the to the Grand Canyon. That's not spoiling a kid at all. It's an experience, I so it's a, it's a good thing, right? But yeah. Then there's it, another pretty, video I saw it, of him, him driving the Razor, right? Yeah, it's it's pretty <laughs> elaborate. It's it's pretty intense. It's not hotel rooms. It's like million dollar Airbnbs. It's like it's not a normal vacation. <laughs> We got a driver that's hired, and then I fly another driver in because I need I need to get to Sedona faster. Oh yeah, because because <laughs> the guy has to sleep. But no, you guys just keep yeah. going. So how many? How yeah, many, we just kept going. And how many? How many people? How many kids were there total? Um, one, two, three, four, five. There was seven of us. And one and one bathroom on the bus. Yeah, they're not. They're only allowed to pee on the on the. You know that. You're oh, only of course. To pee on the bus. Yeah, there's no no pooping yeah. on the bus. However, no depending on which bus you have, you know they've they've they fixed that. There's no more stinky. Ah, no, I don't care if they fix it. You're not you're not pooping on the bus. You're not pooping on. <laughs> but the it bus. wasn't even your bus. You rented it, right? Uh, yeah, but it, it's it's now going to be my bus. I'm leasing oh. it for this tour. So. Oh, so when does the tour start? Uh, looks like we're starting June. When does yours start? Uh, we're, I'm doing a few shows around the country, uh, during the summer, but then the tour tour doesn't start till September, October, something like that. Um, uh, and I, I noticed on your calendar, everything says reschedule, reschedule, reschedule. So I, I didn't look closer. Yeah. Are those dates accurate? It's joecoy.com, right? Yeah, they're, it's, it's getting, it's, it's locked and loaded, man. Uh, I finally get to play Radio City Music Hall, Jeff. Oh, finally. that's great. Yeah, that's Jeez, that's really wait. fun. Yeah, has it, did it sell out quickly? It sold out. Yeah, two years ago. We've been waiting for. It. <laughs> oh no, is that right? It. Well, you know what's funny yeah. is you can sell out Radio City Music Hall, and this is what happened to us because my my promoter kept saying you don't want to play there. I'm like, yeah, I do want to play there. He goes, you're not going to make any money. Yeah. I go, I don't care. But by the time Who you cares? get done with paying the unions and paying all the guys, you can sell it out at a decent ticket price and still lose money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but you know what? It's iconic, man. And we get the we played it, and, and that's amazing. Yeah, uh, you you know when I used to go play, uh, gosh, what is it called? Uh, Caroline's. When I used to play Caroline's, I used to always walk by Radio City, man, and and just look at it. I remember I used to just stare at it, and just in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna play this one day, and and that time is finally coming, man. I can't wait. Well, I don't know if they offer it. Or if my promoter uh, just came up with it, but uh, make sure they give you the microphone you use on stage there. And oh, and, I'm getting that. Yeah, and I don't know if they do it, but they had it, you know, cased in lucite for me. So it's this lovely thing. It's in the family room over there, uh, sitting on the. Oh. I, I don't have many trophies around, but that's one that I kept. That's. Uh, oh, that's awesome! Thank yeah. you for telling me. So when, when is that? that? When is it? Um, it looks like, uh, November ish, November. I, I don't know the exact date, but that's it got great. pushed to November. That's great. Isn't that so, crazy? Two years it's been sold out. So Chelsea Handler, I have never met her before. I uh, don't know, uh, you know, much beyond, uh, what is in the media. Uh, and, yeah. and again, you were, um, you've been 140 episodes and did that, uh, did that, did that change the career? Is it, is that something that you wouldn't be where you are? Had that not happened? Was it that big a thing? You want to hear what's crazy, Jeff, is I was supposed to be her sidekick and I said no to it. Oh. And so like I, I knew Chelsea. We met, I met Chelsea through John Lovitz. I was opening for John Lovitz and right. John Lovitz was like, you have to meet Chelsea Handler. She's my only friend on MySpace. <laughs> and then I went to MySpace and it was only Chelsea Handler and Tom. <laughs> and, then, and then next thing you know, Chelsea started coming to the shows and and opening the shows up and, and me and Chelsea just hit it off. We became like such great friends. And she, she pitched that idea to me and she was just like, I got this deal with E and uh, we're going to do the show. And I, I went through every stage, you know, creating and developing and all that. And then all of a sudden, right at the end, I, 
I pulled away from it. I said, I didn't want to do it. And she cursed me out, man. I wish I would have saved it, but she was like, Oh, you, yeah, I don't want to curse, but you know, F this, F that. And so she was legitimately so angry. She was legitimately oh, she was angry. Pissed. Right. Mm. She goes, you made the worst effing mistake of your life. Good luck with your effing career. Oh F no. This, F that. Oh yeah. And then slam the phone on me. Oh, and I didn't think, uh, and then I was working at Nordstrom rack at the time I was shelving shoes. And then about seven months later, wait, 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 wait a second. And- hold on. Hold on. You were working at Nordstrom's and you yeah, turned down rack. being her sidekick. So yeah. wait, you, you skipped over that. So what was the thought process? Why didn't you want to do it? I, I used to do that a lot, Jeff. Um, I knew that I, I did because I knew that I wanted to be known for me and I didn't want to be, you know, if I was going to get something, I wanted it to be my show. And and I knew I had the talent to do it. And, uh, that makes, you know, well, that, that I, makes I sense. That. Yeah. And, and, you know, there was this other show that I turned down uh, and, and everyone was like, why'd you turn that down? And I was like, because I, sh- I deserve my own special. I didn't want to be part of a theme special. So. I remember turning that down and working at Nordstrom Rack too. And I remember it came on Comedy Central and I was just like, oh, I keep messing up. <laughs> and then a uh, Chelsea show took off. And uh, I, I remember sitting there with my ex-wife going, oh, I messed up, man. But I knew it was the right decision. And, and then about two months later, she called me and she put me on the show. And next thing you know, she made me a regular. And I, I was getting more... Uh, uh, I was getting booked more than her regular writers, uh, regulars on the show. She would put me on every week. So, uh, yeah. And I just love her. We have a chemistry together, you know, to this day, we're still, we're, we're still hanging out, you know, and, and, and we love each other. So that, that drive and that self-confidence, uh, was that developed? Where, where the heck did that come from? Because, you know, the way you grew up, you'd, you'd think it would be the opposite. Yeah. I just, I knew Jeff that if I would have settled with, Chelsea, I wouldn't have pursued my stand up and I wouldn't have be, you know, it, it just wouldn't have happened because I would have been content. I would have been making all that money five days a week. You know what I mean? Going to the set and, and, and not really thinking about my dream and making my dream happen. I, I didn't want that. I'd rather be broke and make my dream happen than make that money and, and letting the dream die. So that was always my mentality. Like, I love stand up and I was going to make it happen. So you say that dream and, and at what age did you decide this is what I want to do? Oh, oh, oh yeah, hold on. At 11? Because it talk you talk yeah. about the uh, the place in uh, Las Vegas. And what was the actual yeah. na- what was the actual name of the place that I used to rent? No, 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 where, where you first started performing. The Hunt Ridge Theater. <laughs> the what? It was called the Hunt Ridge Theater. It was an old movie theater. Yeah. Uh it's it, it's in the oh if you want crack cocaine you go to the Hunt Ridge Theater <laughs> it was that bad and uh it was on Charleston and Maryland Parkway it's called the Hunt Ridge Theater it's it's starting to pick up now they're getting some money down there now but when I rented it you could rent that theater out for six hundred bucks and then uh and then I used to sell tickets to that show and that that used to be my first shows but where did the stand up stand up start and again my goal in these interviews Joe is to to not ask a person the same question they've been asked 80 times because I'm obviously I'm on your end a lot but this is a, yeah. a, a basic so I'm apologize for this so where where did this, yeah. the stand up actually start you said age 11 oh age no age 11 is when I wanted to be a comic and okay. that was in uh Seattle right. Seattle Washington mm-hmm. So yeah. when did it actually then, uh, start? Were you the class clown? Who were you? Wait, hold on. I was the Who class were clown. you in high school? I mean, were you were you shy? Were you popular? What? I was popular because I was funny, but no one wanted to date me. But everyone wanted to sit by me because <laughs> I was funny. So I was the funny guy. Yeah, I was the class clown every year, Jeff. Uh, and did every you year. did you get any like most likely to be arrested or most likely to succeed or most yeah, likely most, anything? No, nope, no, nope, not most likely to succeed. That's for sure. But definitely class clown. Definitely class clown. Wow. I used to I used to impersonate John Lovitz in high school. So it's so weird that he's like one of my best friends. I told him that too. I go, I go, you know what's weird, man, is I'm talking to the guy I used to impersonate in high school. <laughs> and and uh, but were you in talent shows or are you just a class clown or did you actually get up yep. and perform? I would I would perform but never do stand up. It would always be like dancing and or you know, it, it would be Michael Jackson impersonations was my big thing. So that was always, uh, you know, my, that was my first love to the stage. 
And, and was that the like the the evening at the uh, the Apollo thing with the, the hiccups where every, every, yeah every 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 Man. every yeah uh, what is it Michael Jackson has hiccups and who who else yeah. some of the other artists that I'm not familiar with that you talked about at the yeah Apollo. yeah that, right that's a crazy gig that Apollo man I won that by the way Jeff I know you won it and, and you uh, also said it was your most terrifying night why why was the, it terrifying the most ter- because that was the original Apollo like this is that's before it became Hollywood Apollo this was. Harlem Apollo, where, and where you had to rub the rub everybody. the stone, you had to rub the stone in the whole bit. That thing, rub the stone. That's where they booed Lauren Hill. That's where they booed Luther Vandross. Oh like, gosh. like you think they cared about some half white, half Asian guy? Hell no. They wanted to boo right when they saw me. So, I yeah, it, winning that was the most terrifying night of my life. I remember the producer goes, "Are you ready?" And I go, "No, I'm not. I want to go home." I was so scared. And and but it's it's a matter of literally the way the temperature of the room could be in the moment where if you've got a handful of people, this is how I, I say that audiences work. You have to have X number of laughers in there for it to yeah. catch on. And then it's like wildfire. Yep. It catches on. Somebody laughs. Everybody else laughs. That's why they have laughers in, in uh, sitcoms, hired laughers. So I would yeah. imagine that they at the Apollo that the booing is in and getting kicked off stage is the, is the same thing it's this herd mentality yeah. so yep. how That's, how it's long their goal. it's their goal to boo like and, all they think about is booing all week <laughs> i can't wait to get to showtime at the apollo because i got my booze ready and how long and, uh, how long did you have before um like what's the is there any there's i guess there's no grace period so how long was it before you really had them in that in that night, uh, I got him. I got him right when I walked out. What'd you do? You know what's crazy is uh, underneath. You know the 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 green room where they put all the talent is underneath the stage. Oh no! no. So a lot of people a lot of people don't know that you're you literally go underneath the stage and that's where all of the amateurs sit, and and you hear them like so so every time they they would bring an amateur up stairs they would leave and go upstairs and then you can hear them get booed. And then they come back downstairs. It was like gladiator. It was the most <laughs> horrific thing. Like, and, and each time someone get booed, we'd all look at each other. Like, I don't want to go out there. Do you want to go out there? <laughs> so the guy, the guy that went up before me, he got booed. The, the other comedian, he got booed before me. And I'm just like, what is going on? I do not want to go out there right now. And, and how long, yeah, would, so how long would these, these, I guess, mainly guys, how long would they last? Before I mean, literally, would it be like ten seconds, thirty seconds? Yeah, he got booed. He got booed his first joke. So like thirty seconds in, they were already booing him. And it's always that one guy from way in the back, he, he, the guy that goes like this, boo. <laughs> and then next, you know, it's like boo, boo, boo. And it's just like, oh my god. So what was the uh, like, what? What, what was like it? when you watch it on TV, you, right. you, you laugh and have a good time. Like, ah, yeah, that guy got booed. But when you're part of the competition, Mm-mm. you don't want the guy in front of you to get booed because you're like, oh, they're going to boo me. So like you feel sorry for him. You're like, oh, my God, they're booing him. So it, it's, it's a really it's a mind trip, man. It, it, it really messes with your mind. Dude. So that, what, that, what did you do? Fun. What was your opening 30 seconds? I can't even remember, man. I gotta really? watch it. It's, yeah, I, now, yeah, I, now I, I want to. Can you find? Is it on YouTube? Where the heck do you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on YouTube. Okay. But, well, now, uh, now I gotta yeah, go but, see uh, it. Yeah. It's 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 of course it's it's the easiest stuff you could think of. I it was I, I when I got when I got that show, I was like three years in the stand up or four or five years, like maybe five years tops. In the stand-up. So what is it? McDonald's so McDonald's so jokes young. and airline jokes? Gee, is it that? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it it's not. Asian Asian jokes and, and stuff like that. <laughs> it Michael is, Jackson. It is so funny to me uh, uh, how I don't know how this race thing works because I, I just you know I, I there's no way I could come close to doing anything any of your material. I would be canceled and kicked off the planet. And yeah. yet, you know, yeah. guys like you and, and Russell Peters get up there and, you know, you're, you're not 100% uh, Filipino, you're, you're, you're half uh-huh. white and, and you can still do this. It's just so crazy. I think it's great. Again, I think it's so sad what's happening now that so many guys are getting canceled and women are getting canceled because of one joke and one thing that they say and, and everybody feels like they have to 
really be careful. And I wonder, yeah. I ask everybody this, when is this going to end? Is it going to end? Is it going to change? Is it going to turn around? Is it going to slap back? I, you know, I, I say this at every single interview, just watch sticks and stones by Dave Chappelle. And, uh, and, uh, he's, he's amazing. He's, he's, he's the light because he's the one that's, uh, fighting cancer culture as we speak. And, uh, and he crushed it. He got an Emmy for that damn special. So, uh, all right. You know, like, you, you know what I mean? Like if no one's ever see, go watch that special and, 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 and follow the leader, man, because he's, he's, uh, what he did in that special is crazy. You know, you're, everyone's scared to talk about this or talk about that. And, uh, and David went out there and talked about all of it and, and crushed it. And it's on, it's on Netflix. On Netflix. Yeah. Sticks and stones. Okay. I will Sticks absolutely, stones. All right, I'll absolutely do that. You know, what's crazy, Jeff, hmm. Jeff, I, I, I flew out to, uh, Ohio yellow Springs and did, you know, his shows out in the cornfield. And, oh, um, you did. Yeah. It was like Tiffany, you know, me and Tiffany are like best friends. Right. Right. And Tiffany, uh, has like a jet, you know, she's flying out to yellow Springs <laughs> and she's like, she's like, come with me to Dave's. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm with Dave and, uh, backstage and, I'm going out on stage in this cornfield. It's amazing. It was right. the most amazing experience. But as it's happening backstage, he's winning his Emmys for Sticks and Stones. It was oh. the most surreal moment. It was so crazy. Wow. So you hear them screaming backstage like, yeah. And he won two Emmys that night. And, uh, you know, uh, Stan Latham, he, he won uh, his uh, directorial uh, Emmy, his, the first one ever that he's ever won in that was a historic moment, but it was, it was just a surreal moment to be a part of that. So I always like asking everybody, uh, the biggest, uh, the best moment and the worst moment, and it can be what, you know, uh, a career step or a stumble on your own or life just hit you, whatever it was, but let, let's talk about the first one. So if there's, is there that pivotal moment that had this not happened, uh, you wouldn't be where you are, uh, is is there a, is there a performance or is there a decision? What what is that moment in your life that you know there's a parallel universe where you went the other direction and you are not where you are now? Um, it was my decision to not listen to Netflix when they told me no on my special. When they turned me down uh, for my first special live from Seattle, uh, I decided to go shoot it myself, and uh, and then it was so funny. Uh, Jeff, because when I shot it, they, they made sure to call us. They called the team and they were like, Hey, we heard you're still shooting your special. We just want you to know that we're still not interested. <laughs> what? So why would, yeah, they, they, why they, would they, they do that? Because I think they thought that, and I understand where they're coming from. You know, they said no. And I wanted to be like, well, let me shoot it and show you. And they wanted to make sure that there was no responsibility behind it. Like, Hey, look, we're, we're totally cool with you shooting it, but we also want you to know that we're not interested. We don't want to have any obligation to it. And I get it. Right. But imagine that kind of pressure on me, knowing that all this money I'm spending on this special, knowing that the only person I wanted to sell it to, which was Netflix is saying no confidently, like, right. no, we don't want it. It was, it was the biggest gamble of my life. And then, and, and then what happened? That, especially, especially then, cause there's no platforms out there. Like who else is going to play that? And sure. And give me the, 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 the audience that I needed, you know, and I, I wanted that Netflix audience and we shot it. And, uh, I remember when we edited it, when we cut it up, uh, right when we were done editing it, I go, dude, we got ourselves a special here, man. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> like they're stupid if they don't buy it. And we brought it to Netflix and, uh, it was so funny, Jeff, because they said we're done for 2017. We have no room. We bought all the, right. the specials that we want. And, uh, <clears throat> and we shot it we sent it to them. And then, uh, they called us right back and they were like, Hey, don't shop that around. We want it. And we're going to put it on our 2017 schedule. So even though they said there was no room for it, they made room for it. Yeah. No, and, uh, that no, changed my life. No shame. <laughs> and that, and that changed it and that uh, catapulted it. <laughs> So change my life. All right. Then what's the, what's the low point in life where, uh, you thought, I don't know if I can go on or career life or career where I don't know if I can keep going here or, uh, you know, th this isn't working out the way I planned. Is there a moment like that? Um, it was, it was me not getting Montreal again. 
And what I what year like was I that? To quit. The Montreal Comedy Festival. And what year was that? I think it was like 2004. They turned me down again. What, and I had my son. I just had my son. He was a year old. My mom's harping down my my neck, just telling me to go get a full time job, get insurance. You have a son. You're being irresponsible. You can't keep doing this comedy when you got a kid. And you know, and then <clears throat> Montreal turned me down again. So again, like, now I, I got to wait. So again, I want to go back to that. Then where did that confidence come from? Where did that push, where did that drive come from with even your mother telling you to get a job? Is it just that inner voice in you? What, what, what gave you the confidence to know that you could keep going after your dreams? Because I knew I was funny. I, I knew I had it. I knew I was talented. I see all these comedy specials and I'm like, yeah, I have that special. I'm, I'm, I'm equal to these people. So why am I going to quit? And and I didn't understand it. And I, I just had to figure out a way to make extra money. That's when I went and bought, uh, I went to Fry's Electronics. God, rest in peace. Those are all closed now. Yep. Uh, but uh, I went to Fry's Electronics and bought a bunch of DVD burners. And I remember making a fake DVD and burning them all. And I was like, I'll sell them for five bucks a pop. Yep. That'll buy diapers. I'm good. So it, it, I dug deep that way. I was about to quit. Just for laughs, didn't want to bring me out again, and I needed extra money, and that was my way of making extra money were, were those DVDs. But again, if you if you go back to that that person that's inside you, it's um, you had that drive there, you wanted to, but does that confidence in yourself? It has to go back somewhere. It has to go all, you know, I, I look at mine from, from elementary school in the neighborhood I grew up with. And it was that when I did my first little book report in the third grade with a dummy, I got laughs. And I remember standing in yeah. line to go out to the playground and turn into one of my friends and say, did it really sound like the dummy was talking? And the guy goes, yeah, sure it did. And, and it oh, was that's so cool. Yeah. And it was just those friends around me. And the fact that I didn't get beat up on the playground but uh, my parents were very supportive, and I think that gave me that 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 sense of I can do this, I can do this. So yeah. can't you can't you point back to you know okay in 03, you, you were you were pushing it, you knew you wanted to do it, but again, where did that drive come from? Did it come from being the class clown and getting laughs and knowing you were funny then? God, I don't know. <laughs> I just knew I didn't want to give up. I swear. And, right. and I, and, you know, Filipinos, especially my mom, that, that generation, it's all about you do not follow your dreams. Uh, talent will get you nowhere. Like it's all about college. It's all about nursing. It's like, that's what I was dealing with. You know, my mom was all about go to school and get, you know, get a degree so you can get a higher paying job. Like it was so annoying because maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was me like, fighting against my mom just to prove her wrong. You know what I mean? And it isn't and, that and funny. That's, that's, that's a, where I got it. I wonder if that's a cultural thing. That's a cultural thing, obviously, because my, yeah. my thing with my kids have always been find your muse, find that thing yep. that you want to do and do it better than anyone else. Yes. And, uh, even if it's a crazy dream, just run after that and push and everything you think about it, it find that passion and, uh, I, I, you know, and there are a handful of people in this world that are able to, to do that. And, uh, but I just think that's so important. But then what your mom's saying that that makes perfect sense as well. There's the practical thing of just get a job <laughs> yeah. and support your family. Get a job. Yeah. It's, especially stand up comedy. You know, unfortunately I hate to say it, but it's like, yeah, I can see where my mom's coming from. You want to tell jokes for your, the rest of your life. No, right. that doesn't make sense. And, uh, and she was enticing me too. She bought me a brand new car, you know, so I could have a nice car for my son. And, you know, she made it, she made it very comfortable for me. And, um, and, but I still refuse to listen to her. Well, yeah. yeah. And people ask me, they said, you know, with my daughters are all grown now, all grown women, uh, but my boys are five and a half year old twin boys. And they, people say, you're going to encourage them to do the ventral. And I'm no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Because the odds of success are ridiculous. And being in comedy, the odds of success are, are equally ridiculous. It's just like, forget it. No, no, do not be in show yeah. business. Find anything else. <laughs> yeah. But if they want can to, I, you, I will I, support them. I, I hate to interrupt you because I want to yeah. I want to tell you another thing that I do, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, is, you know, I find that in this business that a lot of people look at other people's success mm -hmm. and get jealous. And then they and they quickly hate on that person that the, that's blowing up. 
So they want to, you know, give everybody a reason why they're blowing up. You know what I mean? Oh, the reason why he's blowing up is because of this and that. Right. They don't want to give them the props or learn from that person. So I'm going to give you a, 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 what happened to me in about 2005 ish or 2006. Mm. I can't remember what year it was. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what year it was, but it was you at the Gibson theater, <laughs> right? You're, you're at the Gibson. You're, you're the guy who sent that, that, that pipe bomb. <laughs> were you were you, no, were you at the gibson yeah. at the gibson theater I, I i have been there i don't remember you, you're asking me to but remember you're at what the gibson show. you're at the gibson amphitheater and my son was a huge fan of yours wait 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 wait. that's and, the one at universal yes yeah 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 oh so sure absolutely my son, yep. for christmas for christmas i bought my son every single jeff dunham puppet right Aww. we still have it it's in the garage Aww. It's in the garage, so I need you to sign those, by the way. <laughs> okay. And um, they're in the garage. I'm going to put it up in, next to my bar. And uh, <laughs> because, and the reason why is like, you know, I can see how like being an up and coming comic getting turned down from all these, uh, you know, you know, Jess for laughs and all that. And then here's my son, huge Jeff Dunham fan. I'm buying him these DVDs of you and uh, buying him all the puppets. I can see how that can mess somebody's uh, brain up. <laughs> like, what am I doing wrong? Like, oh. my son doesn't like me. Just for laughs doesn't like me. But it wasn't that. I remember watching you and just going, I can do this, man. You know, Jeff Jeff has shown me that it is possible to to play big venues like this and, and to create a fan base. And, and people are in love with this guy. And I know I can do it. And, and I swear to God, that... It was motivation for me. Well, Taking my son to that show motivated me. Well, I, I appreciate that very much. Um, um, y you know, it is a, it is an odd uh, business when nobody really loves you or respects you. And, uh, you know, I never had any real troubles in life. I, I didn't have to grow up with anything like you did with the racism. And, and some of the stories in the book are just heartbreaking. Um, but it is interesting when you come to Hollywood and, and, you know, you get no respect as a, as a stand up comic because you have a prop, you have a dummy. And, uh, and I appreciate that yeah. very much what you said, but I, I think, I, I think the only reason I'm getting any respect now is just because of the longevity and the fact that, uh, you know, I, I've treated it like a business and just treat the fans as if they're a uh, family and, uh, yeah. uh, give them, give them, I, I, I like to look to Steve jobs. It's like. Uh, he gave everybody what they wanted and then created things that they didn't know they needed. And uh, yeah. uh, I think that's the same way with a show. You go in there and you give them what they want, what they're expecting, and then you add uh, X amount of, I didn't see this coming, and now we got to come back again uh, to see yeah. what else is going to be new. And uh, so, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I see that, and I'm so delighted when I watch your stuff because it is so. Uh, you're so approachable and, uh, one of those performers, I always judge a performer. Would I want to sit down and have a drink with that person and just chat with them? And you're one of those guys, one of those comics that you think you probably get this all the time. It's the same with fluffy with Gabe, where people just walk up to him. Like they know him and uh, yeah. just start chatting because you, you seem like a guy that, uh, uh, is, is on stage who you would be in person. And I found that in these chats. And I think that's one of your reasons for success. It's got to be the reason Spielberg, uh, you know, nabbed you. It's great. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yes. Please. Let's have that drink. <laughs> yeah. It's a good idea. That'd be great. Yeah. As soon as this, have you had your shot? You got your vaccination, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which one did you get? Johnson. The, the Johnson one. Oh, it's good. So uh, you, you, you didn't have a stroke or anything. So you're fine. No, I'm good. It's not, they actually call it Jansen. I didn't even know that. So Johnson and Johnson is Jansen. I know. I got the little thing on my yeah. text that said you have the Jansen vaccine. I went, no, yeah, I didn't. it's actually yeah. called Jansen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I use their shampoo. I use their shampoo, and I, mm, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, this has just been a a, a delight. And uh, oh, real quick, and again, I don't want to ask questions. Everybody have explain your name real quick. Just to, can you do that real quick? This story because it's not your real name. Oh, Joe Coy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's so funny because I, when, when, uh, coming in hot came out my second special, right. Um, I, I, you know, I was getting all these interviews that, you know, people ask me, Hey, why do they call you Joe Coy? And I was like, I went to my aunt cause my aunt's the one that gave me the nickname, but I never knew why she gave me that nickname. Like why did she call me Joe Coy? I don't get it. And, uh, and I, I, so I go at the Evelyn, Everyone's asking me why you call me Joe Coy. Like, what? What is it? What's the reason for that nickname? And then she's like, 
I don't call you Jokoi. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? What are you talking about? She goes, I don't call you Jokoi. You're the one that calls yourself Jokoi. I've never, ever called you Jokoi. I'm like, you're kidding me. What are you, what are you talking about? Like, you always call me Jokoi. I don't call you Jokoi. You're the one that calls yourself Jokoi. And then I'm like, well, what do you call me? And then that's when she told me that your nickname is Joko. My nickname is Joko. There's no why. She goes, I don't know why you call yourself Jokoi. I don't even know why. Every time I watch the specials coming to the stage, Jokoi. I'm like, who's that? I don't even call him that. And I'm like, well, why haven't you told me this? It's been 30 years. You should have told me this 30 years ago. She goes, I don't know. You decided to do it. I'm like, what? Your nickname is Joko. Ko, ko in Tagalog means my. You're my Joe. That's your nickname. My Joe. Joko. I'm like, oh my God, dude. That's fantastic. Literally just found that out. That's Literally fantastic. Literally just found that out. <laughs> Well, Isn't look, um, all right. So the Koi Pond, uh, the podcast and your movie's coming out. When's it going to be released? Do you know? Easter Sunday. It, it really is going to be Sunday. so a, a year from uh, April, right? Yeah. A year, for, a year from this That's month. It. Wow. Yep. That is such a crazy thing. That's just unbelievable. Know, it's great. It's so cool. It's so cool, man. Well, it's congratulations. So cool. That's absolutely amazing. I don't think I don't think Steven Spielberg is going to be. You know, there's a guy that got a dummy. He was in the third grade. He became a great ventriloquist. I don't. That's not a movie. That's <laughs> not a. You got to come up with an alien killer. Is Peanut? Is Peanut an alien? We don't know. I don't know what he is. He's like Gonzo on the Muppets. You know, I, I used to say well, he was a woozle. But it was back in, that was that. That's a Winnie the Pooh uh, thing. Uh, woozles and heffalumps. But I don't say that anymore. I don't know what he is. Yeah, but yeah, we I could... think you should make an alien. <laughs> nice. Make an alien character, man. Then maybe Spielberg would pay attention. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Joe, again, thank you. Congratulations on all your success. We look forward to the film Easter Sunday and uh, the book right now. And I'll put a picture of it again, real quick. Here it is. There it is. Joe Coy mixed plate. Yes. You can get it on uh, all those places right there. Barnes and Noble. It's a real book, or you can download it on uh, uh um, ebooks what's it called just books on apple books whatever and yeah, can you get on kindle books. kindle as well i bet right everything yeah okay. uh, barnes and noble everything amazon books apple books everything perfect it's available everywhere all right well it's a good read yeah thanks for the time my jeff. friend jeff you have to sign those uh those uh all the dolls well you sign my you bible sign so I'll, i sign i'll sign your dolls <laughs> okay cool all right man i love you take care you're the best see ya bye all right, we're back. That was a great interview. Yeah, it was. He hadn't done it yet, but it was genius. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Best one yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I think we're supposed to act like we saw it. Yeah, you're supposed to pretend that uh, Jeff did a good job and that Joe Coy's a good guy, but the uh, interview has not taken place yet, so we don't know. Mm, no, but yeah. But the thanks for watching <laughs> or listening. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a podcast thing. They're listening as well. Great. So, Walter, uh, we have you here today. Do you know why? Uh, I guess I'm supposed to introduce a clip, and uh, you guys know which one it is, correct? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. This is the one where uh, it's the introduction to a uh, relative disaster. That was our special that we shot in 2016? Oh, 15? 15. 15. Fi wow. Fi no. No. 17. 17, yeah, because the boys were born yes. in 15, and they were the backseat of the car. <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were there. <laughs> So this is wow. little Jack and James, uh, and they're tiny. Yeah, and I'm in the car with them, along with Audrey. Yeah. I love this introduction, Matt. You did a, an amazing job with the graphics and everything. It's a, a lot of fun. But we chose oh, this yeah, one. Yeah, and this is the first clip that we've done like this that hasn't specifically been stand-up. This is the first little narrative clip that we've had. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love this one uh, because, uh, as you pointed out, Joe Coy is all about family, and he's an international comedian, and that's what this was. This was me trying to find my roots uh, going back to Ireland, and uh, that's what the special was all about. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we go. Thanks, guys. Good seeing you again. All right. I don't Great care. Great to see you, Walter. Shut up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're driving to the show? Yep. With the wife and the kids? Uh. Hi, Jack. Hi, James. Remind me again why we're doing this. This Ireland trip is about the family being together and discovering our roots. Thanks, sweetie. 
Well, I just discovered I don't want to go. Walter, you're part of this family whether you like it or not. Hey, look what I found smushed under the seat. This old unopened letter to you, Walter, dated 19... Give me that. Oh. Hey, Audrey, what's this extra baby seat for? For when Bubba J passes out? What the hell? <laughs> You'll see. You'll see? What does that mean? What is this? Another baby? Speaking of Bubba J, has anybody seen him lately? Ugh. Oh, he wanted to ride on the roof. These bugs taste like beer. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Be sure and join us next week for our next podcast. Oh, is it going to be next week? Yeah, it always is. Okay, good. Yeah, you can get your Apple podcast or your favorite podcast provider. No one knows. No one cares. Watch it on YouTube or on Facebook. Oh, great. Yay. See it everywhere. Yeah. Be sure and subscribe, like, and comment. And also hit the notifications bell. And by the way, why the hell are you guys here? Oh, yeah, I don't know. No one knows. We can't leave? No one cares. <laughs> Fine.